Now let's talk about how type 1 hypersensitivity reactions work. So we just spent the last video talking about, uh, last few videos talking about mast cell degranulation, as well as basophils and eosinophils, so how they can recognize pathogens using IgE. So IgE, great antibody isotype for recognizing pathogens and triggering degranulation. So unfortunately, some individuals make IgE against molecules, specifically proteins that are found in the environment that are not from pathogens. In theory, our body can make antibodies to anything, but we should really only be making antibodies against pathogens. Some individuals make antibodies against um, proteins that are not pathogenic. So instead of calling them uh, antigens, we can call them antigens because they generate antibodies, but they're not pathogenic. So we refer to them as allergens. So these are typically uh, molecules that generate an allergic reaction or allergic response. For type 1 hypersensitivity, it's uh, um, generating an IgE-mediated response. So I allergens that generate a type 1 hypersensitivity, type 1 hypersensitivity reaction are typically proteins. And when you think about uh, common um, allergies, allergies to pollen or cat dander, saliva, dust mites, individuals who have nut allergies such as peanut allergies, individuals who have dairy allergies or fish allergies, many times these are type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. So individuals um, take in these molecules, we all take in these molecules, if you um, go outside and breathe in pollen, if you live in a house and they're dust mites, um, if you eat foods like nuts and dairy and fish, um, we take in these molecules all the time. Some individuals have an allergic reaction to them. So why is that? So let's talk about the why that is. So um, all these molecules, all these allergens we're talking about, proteins. So we take in proteins all the time from our food, from the air. Um, what do these proteins do? Well, we break them down. Um, we digest them if we're talking about foods. But something that can happen to proteins is they can get taken into professional antigen-presenting cells, such as macrophages and dendritic cells. So when you breathe in proteins, when you eat proteins, some of those proteins could get taken up by these phagocytes via um, pino, macropenocytosis, for example. And when you take in these um, proteins, you can break them down and you can theoretically present them onto MHC class 2 molecules. So individuals who develop type 1 hypersensitivities tend to have inherited MHC class 2 um, genes, so those HLA, DR, DP, DQ, that present peptides derived from these molecules. So individuals who have nut allergies present nut peptides on their MHC2. Individuals who have pollen allergies present pollen peptides on their MHC class 2. So if you present these peptides, what could happen is you could have a CD4 cell that has generated a antigen binding site in its T cell receptor that just so happens to bind that peptide, right? This is a non-self peptide. So it's not like we didn't select for it during uh, in the thymus during the uh, uh, negative selection. So in theory, you can make a T cell receptor with a um, variable regions antigen binding site that binds these peptides. Now, we should really only activate naive T cells when there is a confirmed infection. And if we remember how to activate a T cell, you need to turn on the B7 molecule and the professional antigen presenting cell engages the CD28 molecule on the CD4 cell. And that, we talked about that, that B7 is only turned on during infection typically. But for some reason, the signal is getting through. So now the CD4 T cell believes that this peptide has come from a pathogen. It hasn't, it's come from just some protein in the environment. So at the same time, this cell, it's trying to decide what type of T cell should it turn into, differentiate into. So unfortunately, IL-4 has come from somewhere, possibly a basophil, and bound the IL-4 receptor on this T cell, and it thinks it should turn into a TH2, 
helper T cell. What's a TH2 helper T cell going to do? It's going to help isotype switch a B cell to make IgE. So for individuals to develop these hypersensitivities, we need a B cell. And that B cell, the naive B cell, and it has undergone VDJ recombination such that the antigen binding sites on the immunoglobulin um, antigen binding site regions, the variable regions, have just so happened to bind these proteins, cat proteins, pollen proteins, nut proteins. Uh, it's very easy for the human body to generate antibodies to any molecule. So it's not surprising that all of us could make antibody binding sites that bind these proteins. We rely on this ability to generate antigen binding sites to bind virus proteins, to bind bacterial proteins. So it was not surprising to bind a uh, regular protein that we breathe in or that we ingest. What is surprising and unfortunate is if this protein gets brought into the B cell by receptor-mediated endocytosis, presented on MHE class two as a peptide, and that T cell says, yep, I have a T cell receptor that binds that peptide, I think that's a pathogen. So here comes some cytokines, for example, IL-4, and the B cell isotype switches to make IgE because these cells, the professional antigen presenting cell, the Th2 cell, and the B cell all believe that they are gearing up to fight a parasitic infection, but they are not. They're unfortunately fighting um, nothing. They're reacting against um, these proteins, which are not pathogenic, but too late. We've made IgE against these proteins, and now the IgE will be released, and where will it go? It will bind to FC epsilon receptors that we find on the surface of granulocytes, such as mast cells, basophils, and eosinophils. So now these cells are covered in IgE. Uh, during this first exposure, um, or whenever the body has uh, um, had these unfortunate series of events, to have a T cell receptor and a B cell receptor and an MHC that all participates in generating um, isotype switch uh, B cells to switch to IgE, we make some IgE. And that's, you know, not great, but nothing is happening right now until the allergen comes back, we breathe it in again or we eat it again, and it's going to bind to now IgE that is now found on the surface of mast cells. That's gonna trigger uh, receptor cross-linking and degranulation. And when we release these granules, what do we do? We cause inflammation. So this is uncomfortable because now we're uh, uh, released, we're inflaming tissues um, just against some environmental protein that is not a pathogen. And depending on where this happens in the body, uh, if it's in the skin, it could cause rash. If it happens in the GI tract, it can cause diarrhea and vomiting. If it happens in the respiratory tract, it can cause uh, coughing and wheezing and mucus buildup. So um, we've been exposed to these allergens. Now we make IgE against the allergens and we can degranulate our mast cells against the allergens. Not a good thing. So for um, more expo repeated exposure to allergens, um, sometimes results in more severe allergic reactions. So individuals who are exposed to it once and then exposed to it again, exposed to it again, they become more and more sensitive to the allergen. Some individuals um, build up this sort of almost deadly level of sensitivity to these allergens. And the reason being is because every exposure to an allergen or you know normally a pathogen is supposed to trigger um, more production of antibodies. Because remember, when you are exposed to a pathogen and hopefully you defeat the pathogen, you make memory B cells. And those memory B cells will remember that pathogen and reactivate much quicker the next time they see it. So during every subsequent exposure to an allergen, we're reactivating naive, I'm sorry, memory B cells. And they're churning out more IgE. And now we have more IgE that's going to bind more FC epsilon receptors on the surface of mast cells which will make them more sensitive to the allergen and we will get more, easier and more degranulation. So for those individuals who become more and more susceptible to these allergens, almost to a deadly level, um, it has to do with this unfortunate series of events 
that cause B cells to make antibodies to these proteins. And these are AGE antibodies. So this is just introduces the um, what goes on in hypersensitivity reactions in general. The next video we'll talk about specifically in different parts of the body um, what mast cell degranulation does in terms of the symptoms it causes.